to my channel. Today we have a busy day ahead of us in the garden. We're going to be working in the flower beds. I have some plants that I need to shuffle around from different beds to others, things I need to split and relocate. The fall is the perfect time for me to get a lot of garden chores done. And I'll tell you why. We typically have very mild winters and fall weather. So what I try to do is move the things that I've observed during that garden season that maybe struggled, were too big for where I had them, or needed a bit more sun, etc. Now, part of why I'm also relocating plants is to plug holes that I identified this season. And it's good to take a season off from adding to the garden so you can kind of see how things play, where your holes are, and so you can work on filling those. I have a lemon cypress tree that I kind of just stuck it in the ground where I had it because I didn't know where I was going to put it. So now I know where I want it and I'm going to move it. It's doing well where I have it. And I may regret moving it, but I'm still going to move it. I also have two little limes planted in my back black, in my back flower border. And the reason I'm moving them is because one is huge, tall as me, and the other is very small. So obviously they're not getting identical light conditions and I have a bed that's perfect for them where they'll get similar light conditions. Also the back flower bed has quite a few hydrangeas and this bed has none. So for those who don't know, my two, my three favorite flowers are hydrangeas, peonies, and roses. And it depends on what's in season, what I'll tell you I love more. I love them all, but <clears throat> I especially love rose season when it's rose season, and I especially love peonies when it's peony season, and the same for hydrangeas. Now, I love hydrangeas because I feel like they actually are the backbone to the garden. They perform all season long, from the time they put their foliage on, all through winter, even with their aged blooms, and again, you know, in the springtime. So, love me some hydrangeas. I love roses also, and they're very dependable here. They bloom for a very long time. Matter of fact, it's early November and I still have roses blooming in the garden. Other things I plan to do today is split some lambs ear and spread them around my studio, uh, which is my office space. And I also have some sedum that I want to split and shift around the different flower beds, etc. So come along as we tackle these tasks.
ear was given to me this spring. It was literally one piece, one small piece, and now I have all of these that I'm going to divvy up and put around my office, studio, and then a little bit in the bed in front of it. I'm going to also follow that up with some daffodils, and I think we'll have a pretty show come spring. But the nice thing about plants like lamb's ear, I mean, in my hand, I have probably 10 plants, but I'm literally gonna make it maybe three, four, and do the same with the pieces on the ground. So from two plants, I probably have 25 this season alone. Lamb's ear is one of those plants that all season long you're getting interest. Look at this beautiful blue, silvery color and then to touch it it just feels so soft you want to keep touching it and this is the helen von stein lamb's ear and it smells to me like grape kool-aid literally like grape juice grape kool-aid so i'm taking off the dead leaves i'm going to split it some more put it in the ground and then next year and the year after it's going to multiply and be nice and full the fall is the time that I choose to do a lot of splitting of perennials because they'll get the chance to put in nice root systems during the winter months and then come spring they hit the ground running. Because we sometimes have such hot summers and springs, it makes sense for me to do what I'm doing in the fall and winter. Now you have to know your zone and your climate. I garden in Georgia in zone 7B. We have had years where we barely had any spring. We went right to summer. Our daffodils tend to bloom around February, daffodils and tulips. By March, my irises are starting to put up fronds and they, the bloom stalks and they bloom come April. My roses are blooming May, you know, so everything is earlier in our garden than yours. And so as a result of that, I got to plan accordingly. So getting all this stuff done now saves me the work on the back end later. I have dug all the lamb's ear, split them, and replanted them in the various spots around the studio, as well as in the flower bed directly across from the studio. Now I'm in the back behind the house by the long flower border back here in order to move some things around. This is a little lime hydrangea right here, and there's another one at the end 
of this bed that I'm going to dig and put in my driveway flower bed. I'm also going to dig up a um, I'm also going to dig up a hibiscus that's back here that's not getting enough sun. As you can see, there are trees everywhere. Eventually, the trees that are shading this hibiscus will be cut down because they are hanging over the house, but the cost to remove them right now is prohibitive. So when they are done, I will add more sun-loving plants to the far end of this flower bed because right now it's getting a lot of shade. So moving the two little limes, digging up the hibiscus, and I also may move a little lime, not a lemon lime, excuse me, a firelight, quick fire, and move it further in the bed because it's a bit far and you don't always see it as readily. We'll see. Um, still have lots to do on my list, but I like checking things off. Got the lemon cypress move, the lamb's ear moved, digging up the little limes. <laughs> I told y'all but I'm struggling with an armadillo. I just found a penstemon in this bed that it dug up. This bed is very neglected. I promised I would have given it some love this year but I didn't have time. So I'm making this promise and asking you all to hold me accountable to put some work in it this year. Because it's beautiful when it's all bloomed but it needs some work need some edging and some mulching and I have some ferns I have some ferns that are trying to take over so because as I said before, this is a, I think it's a quick fire. Half the tag is missing, so I think it's a quick fire, but it stays small. So it's perfect for staying here. <laughs>
time. Quick fire. Oh, excuse me. Fire light here. Behind it, I will eventually add a limelight. So limelights are a very big, uh, good hydrangea for those gardening in the south. It really does not mind the heat, doesn't mind the humidity, and can go long periods without water. And that's remarkable for a hydrangea because, you know, hydrangeas, just by their names, love water. Hydra means water. So um, I like to add them to all the beds because it's nonstop blooms all summer long. And then when the blooms fall off, excuse me, when the blooms stop being as white and as pretty, you still have interest for the winter months. So I'm going to add one here and one at the other end. And I am really just loving this. I know it doesn't look like much at the moment, but come spring, it'll be really pretty. And then in the springtime, this bed is one of the oldest beds in the yard. This bed has a lot of daffodils that need to be split. I noticed that earlier this year, but when we first came home from the hospital with my husband, he required a lot more care than he does now for me personally. I was on duty 24 hours a day and wasn't really much gardening going on during February, March, and April when would have been a good time to split those. So I'm hoping to get that done this coming spring. Daffodils go through a period where it's called being blind. It simply means they don't bloom as aggressive or as abundant as they did previously. And when they go through that period, you know it's time for you to split them. So it's time for me to split a lot of these daffodils. I have several varieties in this bed and I really want to have the bed perennialized so that in the spring it's nothing but a carpet of daffodils and then irises and so that it's just blooms upon blooms upon blooms. That's how I like it. All right, let's continue. Since we were last on together, I added this arborvitae, these ground orchids back here, and right here is a viburnum that used to sit in this corner, but I replaced it with some rainbow asca euphorbia and some sedum. Um, as you can see, the lamb's ear, that's one right here, and all along this flower bed all along the front you can see in here excuse my mess on my porch i have some people who were here and they left their clothing and those are different projects in the works so excuse the mess you can see all the lambs here and all the sides. Now there's the lemon cypress loving its life since it's been transplanted. And 
this bed over here. I got some of the lamb's ear as well. And you can see that it has split and not split, multiply. I have since also added daffodils in here. And these are the type that will perennialize. So I will have them in this bed forever. Roses and butterfly bushes and stuff has not been pruned back yet, but it's doing good. I've added irises and daffodils in here. I'm going to add some more things so that there's flowers lining both sides of the walkway up towards the well house and my office. On the agenda is to swap out this door and paint it. I've already got the paint. This is a clematis here on the side and there's a climbing rose on this side. So once I get it painted and trimmed out, cleaned up, it's going to look really pretty there. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today. As you can tell, a lot of work has been done and I cannot wait until spring and summer to see the vision that I have come to fruition. As always, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed my content, please consider subscribing. Happy gardening.